more. So Pastor Manning joins us. We're going to cover a lot of news uh, in this hour with him today. Pastor Manning of Atla, A-T-L-A-H dot org. And he is a prominent pastor. He was speaking out against Obama uh, from before he was even elected, warning of the great evil. I thought he was, not exaggerating, but I thought he was miscalculating how bad it would be. I was wrong. It's uh, far worse than I thought. It's been dead on. He has waged war against Christians. He is a wicked devil. And he's uh, being opposed by folks right there in Harlem, like Pastor Manning, who also called for the boycott and, and, and the kicking of uh, Sharpton off of MSNBC. That happened. So he's got a lot of courage because, let me tell you, the kingpin in Harlem, at least for 30 years, has been Al Sharpton. So to take on a kingpin in New York is a big deal. So I admire Pastor James David Manning for his courage. Atla, A-T-L-A-H dot org. Uh, so God bless you, my friend. And you heard my little five-minute intro here. Do you think it's, it, it, I mean, do you, get, do you get my point of we need to punish these media whores and go after them and bring them down so the other liars know they're not safe? Of course. And in fact, Alex, what you're saying with respect to uh, Donald Trump's natural instinct to be truthful, to be powerful, to be fearless. That's natural for him. Uh, he doesn't have to think about that. He doesn't have to have the poll people in the polls or, or premeditate what he's going to do. But you know, the other thing, there's a scientific axiom that says for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. And, and that is true as well. As a result of Donald Trump's natural instinct to be powerful, to be truthful, to be fearless, it brings out the natural instinct of the media to be sleazy, to be skanks, to be liars, to be dishonest, to be deceitful. That's just the opposite reaction that they have to Trump. Now, you notice if there's someone else, I don't know, is it Hillary Clinton or Bill Clinton or whoever the hell else, else that comes on, they treat them differently because their natural reaction is different. But with, with, with Trump, uh, the media is just getting worse. And, and, and the stronger he gets, the more... I suppose, skanky or sleazy, they, they become. So that's why that's happening as, as that is. And it's going to continue uh, in that mode as well, uh, as long as Trump is in the, in the public uh, spotlight. You targeted Sharpton, and he and, and deservedly have really crippled him. I'd say he's 80% fallen. He deserves it. Uh, we're going after Williams, Couric, all these folks. Not in a vindictive way. These are lying predators squatting on us. Right. And, right. and if we just start going after them, they always fall. Hello, are you there? Yes, Pastor, can you hear me? Yeah, I, I can. Sorry, Scott blipped uh, out. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I, you're right. We need to go after them. I, we went after Sharpton, and let me say that we we went after him, and God took him down. Listen, Alex, uh, Sharpton had a 6 o'clock uh, spot on MSNBC, drive time, people just getting home, watching the news for more than three and a half years. We went after him. We went down to MSNBC and stood in front of the studio there at Rockefeller Center. For eight hours, we stood in front of that studio and called Sharpton out. He wouldn't come out. In fact, all the other reporters that work for MSNBC went in another door. We found out exactly what door they go into when they're going into report for, for duty. Anyway, we, he came down. God took him down. We shut down a local restaurant. It was a very powerful restaurant here in New York City. We went before that restaurant one Sunday afternoon with our people out in front of that restaurant uh, telling them that they're advertising on Sharpton's broadcast. And uh, we were there for 15 minutes, a hot 15 minutes. The manager, who was in someplace else, owner of the restaurant, called us in and said, they'll never advertise on MSNBC again. He's gone. He's now at 8 o'clock on Sunday morning. There's nobody watching him now. It's just a matter of time now before he completely fades. Sure, from they the, say face. So that's what they did with that Piers Morgan guy. Yeah, right, right. They, they gave him that. But he's gone. He, he's through. But we need to, I mean, you're going after Katie Curry. She needs to be going after. The truth of the matter is there's nothing left there. She's hanging on by a wing in a press. She, she's not entertaining. She's certainly not a good journalist. Yeah, she, she makes has, fraudulent documentaries now. Yeah, but you know, the other thing you were talking about how CNN, I've watched you on CNN on several times, and how they manipulate your presence there. But I was amazed that you were able to satellite broadcast, bring your own camera in to CNN, because, it, I, you know, they're very strict about that kind of thing. But I've watched them, uh, how they manipulate. And they too, by the way, Alex, have a sense of evil, have a sense of lying and a sense of deception. We got to reach the people that watch CNN and let them know what's being done to them, that they're being brainwashed, that they're allowing. That's a great point. There's still a remnant of people 
that buy into mainstream media. Now, the right. general public's still somewhat asleep, too, but they get the propaganda from entertainment and things that are embedded in, in media. That's why Obama goes on every show under the sun from ESPN to Jimmy Fallon. How do we reach those people that are still in Zombo land, Pastor Manning? Well, you know, we got to continue to do what we're doing. But I think one of the great ways that I reach them here is by staring up the truth here in Harlem. I get the attention of the New York Times, and a lot of these people are New York Times readers or the CNN people. They're in that liberal mode that there is nothing too aggressive. But when you actually confront them with the truth, such as what I do, confronting black people, and there may be something that perhaps I can, only I can do, because I'm able to confront black people in Harlem. I'm able to tell them the truth. I'm able to tell them about themselves, about their EBT cards, about their uh, you know, the sh uh, track phones, uh, about their so-called black president. That gets the media stirred to the point where they come to talk to me. And that way I can get these same people that listen to CNN, or watch CNN, and get little uh, sentiments of truth in, if you will, a piece of truth. But it's very difficult because they're insulated. And, 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 and they've got the media coverage, so they don't let persons like yourself get to them. But we can get them. Sure. And, 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 and just to clarify, I would say that I'm not doing the interview unless I can have my own camera person there. I would then record what was really said. They would try to distort it later, and I would show what was really okay. said. Right. And so then they just stopped interviewing me. Like you said, they're very controlling, period. And for years, I wasn't on until they agreed to have me live with Piers Morgan, and they cut that short as well. So that's why they never let me on live. Because they want to act like it's live with the host, taped an hour before, edit it however they want, cut your audio off, play games, and try to make it look like you said things you didn't say. You know, I saw I saw a clip, I think it was on CNN a week or so ago, where, no, it was on MSNBC, where they were talking about how uh, Trump was on your broadcast and how you, and, and, and trying to align Trump with being off the charts or lose cannon because he talks to Alex Jones. I was sitting there watching it, and and that's exactly. I think it was MSNBC. Chris Matthews, you know that creep, that low life. It's all Chris over. Matthews. Yeah, Slimeball is his name. Yeah, it's okay. It's he hosts ball. the show Slimeball. Yeah, okay, all right. But he's the one who said it. Oh, Trump, it talks to loose cannons like like Alex Jones had your picture up there, and and had you. I mean, it, 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 he stayed on you for a while, and the other little guy that comes on after him. Went after you as when, as well. I said, why are they, why are they trying to skew Alex here Because tonight? they know if Trump goes with hardcore Americana, he will win. They're trying to manipulate his campaign people to buy into the fact that, oh, don't go in the briar patch. And, and, of course, Trump's smart. He's jumping in the briar patch because he knows that's where the populism is. Listen, behind the but scenes. They may, be, they may be thinking as well, Alex, that if Trump wins, which I think he's going to do, that that's going to elevate your position to reach a lot of people because Trump is going to come You're to you. You're right. The I New mean, York Times actually said that last week. They said it's horrible. Alex Jones. And they're, they're afraid of you. It's not Trump. They're, they're afraid of, well, they are afraid of Trump, but they will be afraid of your influence. And, and, Trump and you too. It's just everybody that's straight talking. That's all we're doing. But the New York Times actually said that. They said the horror of Alex Jones being elevated and legitimate. And they said, right, it appears right. it's already happened. Right. right. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, the whole Pentagon listens. Of course it already happened. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's the thing they're afraid of. And I think that's the thing that needs to happen in America. You know, it, 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 it has been reported throughout history that, you know, you rise, you fall, you go up, you go down. Kingdoms come and kingdoms fall. And it's Their era is now. ending. Their era is ending. Is that what you're Absolutely. saying? That's all, that's all I'm trying to say. That's exactly what I'm so trying So what's to coming, say. my friend? Well, I think persons such as yourself are coming, and modestly, I'd like to think that I am coming as well. Modestly, I'd like to say, but to be sure, uh, persons like yourself are coming. Drudge needs more uh, exposure as well, because they beat Drudge down. We need Breitbart out there more effectively as well. And I think once we get that kind of an American patriotic, if you will, with a godly Christian base, uh, dealing with America again, we can see ma America. In fact, Trump is going to need you, Breitbart and Drudge, to make America great again. Hell, the New York Times is not going to help him. Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, they're not going to help him. So he's going to need people sure, like Sure, if they endorse him, that will hurt him. And they're just now figuring out 6% of the public trust mainstream media. But getting aside Alex Jones or Matt Drudge, because we, you know, we're all in this fight like you to fight tyranny, we're just manifestations, our growing success and the establishment's fear that they have no credibility. It's not that we're that good, it's that they're that bad. As you said earlier, uh, Trump just naturally, somebody charges the stage, he runs at them. Uh, you know, uh, somebody gets in his face and lies about him, he says, you're a piece of garbage liar. You know, he, they're so scared of the fact, but then when they get around evil people like Hillary or Obama or Michael Moore, they all just fawn over each other. In fact, I know 
Two people that know the heir to the Astro Fortune, tens of billions of dollars, folks, in, in hidden assets and things like that. CIA operative Anderson Cooper, folks, look it up. He's really CIA and disinformation operative. His mother is Gloria Vanderbilt. You know, you know who his mother is, Gloria Vanderbilt. That's who his mother. I think she's deceased now. Absolutely. So he's the heir to that. And I right. know multiple people that know him. And I'm going to stop there. He he had a driver for three years that he never talk to and people that work for him are told don't look him in the eye he doesn't give people bonuses reportedly and it's the same with hillary and all of them these people don't like hillary they don't pay their taxes they steal money from charities i'm about hillary now he they don't you can't look him in the eye they're the most hateful anti-liberal people on earth and they sit up there telling us all day how they love us and how they love america and how they're the moral authority when he's a guy worth billions and billions of dollars in tax-free foundations in the cia attacking america and won't even talk to his driver or his butler for three years sir exactly what you have just said is the reason why the media is attacking trump the way they're attacking him because they recognize a Trump presidency. Forget about a Trump presidency. And he treats just, his employees super good and is super real. That's what they're scared of. Let's just look at a Trump candidacy, how the Trump candidacy is revealing all the things you've just said about the billions, of not millions, but billions of dollars are being stolen. The fact that they don't pay taxes, the fact that the CIA becomes their own protective security agency and how they, if you will, propagandize everything to the American people who are still asleep and their sofas riding around their silver riders and not paying attention to what the hell is going on. That's what a Trump candidacy has done. Imagine what a Trump presidency will do. Exactly, but getting off on that rant, when you talk about Henry Kissinger, Hillary, Michael Moore, any of them, I've seen them personally around their people. They treat their people like they're not human. You're not supposed to look them in the eyes. These are monstrous people. How could you have a driver for three years? I mean, I'd be, I'd be my driver. I mean, I don't, I don't have a driver, but I have a driver. I'd be. They'd be my best friend probably in a month or something. I just don't get how you can be you, around people you, and then... You, you said something a few moments ago, early on in the, your first segment about demonizing. Uh, and you, and then you went on to explain that in a, in a great way. That you're, you're referencing that they're demonizing or that they have demons rather because they are demonizing, which makes a whole lot of sense. I forgot exactly how you said it and I kind of let it get Well, we have to demonize out. them because they are out coming after us acting like demons. They are demons. So when we right. expose them, we're demonizing them because they are demons. So when you talk about people like Henry Kissinger and Bill Clinton and all the rest of that crowd, you just made mention of these people are high into demon possession. They just are. Listen, Alex, you cannot reach the level of debauchery and evil that they are in and still be a Sunday school student. You just can't do it. It is required. It is a, requir a requirement that you have a certain amount of demonic power to be part of the club demon. you gotta absolutely. do bad things oh, absolutely absolutely so yeah, so they gotta be demon inspired to do what they do and we need to maybe you know but they they present this facade to the people the press then inculcates that facade to make people think that out there that was just watching in their easy chair that these are normal people that have just worked very hard to become who the hell they are that's not true at all it's just the opposite of that They've been led into a evil society. It's it's a spirit. They've been led into a cult of no name, a cult of predators. I mean, you think about the Skull and Bones Society, uh, which all the Bushes belong to, the Yale students all participate in, where you lie in a coffin and people come by and urinate on you. Uh, you know, you can think about what does that do to a person's psyche and where do you have to be in order to want to be a part of that. And then once you get out of that soap, that piss soaked coffin, what are you willing to do or say or be if you allow yourself to do that or participate in such? I'd never let another man piss on me while I'm lying. And by the way, that's only the first level of it. It goes right into <laughs> hardcore stuff later. <laughs> I, I'm glad you pointed that up. But yeah, that so that's what we're that's what we're dealing with in America. Um, uh, Alex, and you know, as you stated earlier, we're not that good at what we do. I mean, okay, we might know something about a little about by you about, about broadcasting, but it's just that what they do is so obviously evil. And, and thank God, some of us have the ability to look and to see what they're doing. And I, you know, I want to thank God for your audience too, Alex. I think you have to give them credit that they're able to hear you. They're amazing. They, yeah, because listen, I mean, you, can you imagine how your audience, people that listen to you all over the world, but especially in America, are bombarded 
by their co-workers, uh, bombarded by the liberal media, uh, bombarded by the politicians uh, to try but to they get break the bullying. The bullying doesn't control them. I want to ask you, because right. I agree with you, another great turning's coming. They know a time of great change is coming. They're trying to stop that. What do you expect to see in the future? What will Obama do? Uh, what are you watching on your radar? Pastor Manning is our guest, atla.org. I'm Alex Jones of Infowars.com. Stay with us. We're you know, our founders in this country were predominantly Christians. They were predominantly Protestants. Nothing against Catholics. I don't get into that whole bash fest. But they really wanted to build a free world, and they tried to end the evils of slavery in Europe. And England finally did end it, and they ended it worldwide, put ships on the seas for 50 years to kill anybody that was running slaves. And then America tried to end it in, in, in 1776, but couldn't. And we ended up having a horrible civil war that killed over a million people. But you notice in the modern age, they always point at America's evils, but not that slavery's going on in the Middle East right now. The women are slaves. And I raise that point every day because they're demonizing the idea of Christ illuminating us. You go, well, the Illuminati, that's the Illuminati. No, the globalists saw our revolution, the Jacobins, they created the French Revolution. They created a counterfeit to the Christians that wanted to bring light to the world, who wanted to truly build a new world. They knew they couldn't end all that corruption in that system. They tried to set up a new one, and it wasn't perfect either, but it had the idea to reach for something better. And that's why you only hear about the sins of America or the West because the globalists are against that because they want to go back to tyranny, back to older and Western tyranny, similar to what Rome had. Absolute rule, absolute control. And that's where we're going today. And I simply don't like seeing people oppressed or controlled. And I see the social justice warriors. I'm going to ask Pastor Manning about this in a moment. We have like, it's got to be 15, 20 videos or more. New ones are going up every 10 minutes. Biggs is just doing a great job by himself. He, we didn't have the crew. We're, we're short on crew right now because folks are on vacation. And, and he wanted to go out to California to follow the social justice warriors at universities where any libertarians or Christians or uh, conservatives speak, they come to shut it down. Um, or even folks that are concerned about liberals are, are putting this on. I'd call the guy part liberal from Breitbart, uh, their tech editor, um, who is, you know, against them trying to ban free speech, even though he is a.k.a. a homosexual. They don't even want to let him speak. So these people are anti-free speech. And I think that's going to be their answer to the new enlightenment, the new renaissance of awakening and empowerment that we're starting to see happen worldwide because things got to get bad before they get better. We're going to talk to Pastor Manning here in just a moment. I want to have your quick questions or comments for Pastor Manning here in about 10 minutes, 800-259-9231. I just want to get a bunch of you on, 800-259-9231. Pastor uh, Manning will be with us about five after next hour. Then Joe Biggs is going to be joining us from the ground in the middle of this. He's already been to two universities. It's total bedlam. These people are attacking, uh, screaming racist. They're mainly white people screaming, you're a white male, you're not allowed to speak. I mean, it is the most bizarre stuff you've ever seen. Uh, it, it's like that Guardian guy that is, you know, saying that whites are inherently evil, and the guy looks like he's like 80% Anglo. It's just, it's, just, it's just a reverse mental illness racism. I want to ask Pastor Manning what he calls it. I call it divide and conquer, but we're going to be talking about that uh, in just a minute. Now... Briefly, we are listener supported. I'm going to leave it at that. So is Pastor Manning with his broadcast, what he does, feeding hundreds of children and youth a day, really waking up Harlem. He's a great place for you to support as well. Uh, he, he didn't pay me to say that. I, I get guests on, I admire and I appreciate, and that I think you ought to know about. Because it's hard for me to find good churches to tithe to. I, I do give the Salvation Army and to some small country churches and things, but most of these big mega churches are just sold out to make everybody feel good and not stand, you know. Find a church that goes and protests ab abortion clinics. That's where you ought to be giving money. Or a place that feeds poor people. Or a place that goes and gets bums off the street and tries to rehabilitate them. You know, that's what this comes down to. And he's doing it. So, atla.org, I think folks should support him. If you really want to bring some light to Harlem, and he's brought, already brought a lot of light with his great congregation. They're very exciting. And we need to be supported. And our local affiliates need to be supported. We have the new Alexa Pure Breeze, energy-efficient HEPA, uh, ion cluster air purification system. This is the highest rated. There are similar units that are upwards of $1,000. This is normally 200 and something bucks. It's a 184 introductory offer. 
four-stage purification process for superior air quality. Patented ion cluster technology kills airborne microbes with a, a final byproduct of clean water, no ozone. That's that's good because all those ozone machines are toxic in my view. I mean, I know when something making me feel sick. Uh, intelligent air quality sensor and indicators, easy to clean and maintain, silent mode, 16 dB, quieter than the whisper, uh, energy efficient, cycles 120 uh, feet every 12 minutes, air change per hour, ACH exceeds allergy and asthma foundation recommendations, space saving design, about the size of a large briefcase, perfect for rooms, up to 800 square feet, one purification unit with ion cluster technology, one pre-filter, one true HEPA filter, one carbon activated filter. And these last a long time. You can also clean them. We have a, a breakdown of them up against leading competitors. Uh, it's just amazing. The innovation, we only bring in the very best sponsors. We direct sell this to you from the manufacturer in Utah. They're patriots, so it's a win-win-win. Support the show. Support American industry. Support your family. Infowarsstore.com. And I'd buy one of these for every room. Just, just buy one, see if you like it, and then get more. It's truly amazing. They make great water filters. Alexa Pure as well. 10% off of promo code WATER. Uh, we've got a lot of other great products at InfoWarsLife.com. Brain Force uh, is an amazing nootropic, totally natural. It just boosts normal brain activity. Quite frankly, it's so powerful, I only take it if I've got to work at night. I mean, I, I, I've had one cup of coffee today, and I'm bouncing off the walls. So I, I don't need more energy with super male vitality and X2. Uh, but, but if you want to kick in the pants, this is it. It's like my buddy took... He took three knockouts last night, and he could hardly get up this morning. So when you take our, our sleep aid, I wouldn't take more than two, folks. Uh, Anthroplex is back in stock. It, it's basically like the powder version, lower price, but high quality of uh, Super Mel Vitality. Secret 12 is the highest quality methyl cobalamin vitamin B12. That's available at InfoWarsLife.com as well. So thank you so much again for joining us. I don't do a plug every segment like most of us. I do like a five-minute plug each hour. And please support us because you are what allows us to continue on. And we're all in this together. And I want to thank you all and salute you all for your support, your prayers, most importantly. And then, of course, spread the word about the broadcast. They're trying to censor us. They're globally announcing censorship. And that's what I want to turn to now. They have somehow taken liberals who had a lot of good ideas about empowering everybody and everybody a shot. They just stole the Christian ethic of the, of the abolitionists. That wasn't just here, that was in Europe. And that's what happened. And they just turned it into a social justice warrior thing now where they want to get rid of speech and the right of assembly and Christians' rights in the name of total equality. Now you can't say mother or father on government forums or say it in school, literally, because that might hurt somebody who doesn't have a mother or father. See, now you can't have something because somebody else doesn't have it. This is going into pure communism. While the elite are offshore and you know, have billions of dollars in red carpets. It's so hypocritical. But they're also promoting globally with Facebook and others with the EU to start just don't criticize Islam. We're going to arrest you or kick you off Facebook. The global initiative to censor is now here because they want to hold back humanity wanting choice, wanting true diversity, wanting the power to discriminate. Yeah, it's wrong to discriminate against somebody just because they're a woman or they're a man or they're white or they're black or whatever. But to say I go to this restaurant because their food's better. Then the other restaurant where I get food poisoning, that's discrimination. If you're walking down the street and there's potholes and you step over one so you don't get your shoes wet, that's discrimination. Uh, if you hire somebody and they, you catch them stealing a day after, you, discrimination is, is just knowing what's going on. So they've twisted words. And I think we're going to see a huge reign of censorship. My response is don't give into it. But, but Pastor Manning, you've got the floor the next 10 minutes or so before we go to calls. Correct me if I'm wrong. Augment that. Take your time. Walk through how you think they're going to counter strike this huge global awakening that's happening, sir. Well, in a couple of things, Alex, I think that we need to be very mindful of a post Obama era. Uh, and, and one of the things that I've noticed about the, the recent activities of Obama, were, number one, was that he, the first of a president to visit some maximum security prisons and to begin to hammer the judges, the Supreme Courts, and the federal courts. Uh, to release their sentence practices on prisoners and to try to reverse some of the sentences that have already been handed down, given the opportunity for many of these prisoners, people that are in prison that are inculcated with Islam, because black men that go to prison learn about Islam. It's, it's, it's very pervasive in the prisons, but also black men that go to prison and white folk, uh, they are very inculcated with the whole idea of hating America 
And they already had a, have a, before going to prison to become criminals, they had a warped sense of what is right and what is wrong and a warped, warped sense of justice. I'm very concerned now as well that the movie industry has all of a sudden released a remake of the 1970s edition of the eight segment movie of Roots that stirred the hearts of young men that sent men to prison in large numbers. Roots, as a, as a documentary declaring that it was authentic, demonstrating the horrific or alleged horrific events that happened to black people with the slave trade, where most of the slave trade went on in Africa with blacks on blacks, that haven't been said, that I, I, I see a storm coming with the releasing of roots. Oh, the because, media is hyping race war 24-7 everywhere. Yeah. Well, that's and no what one's defending, no one's defending European slavery. But exactly, no one talks about that everybody's done it. It's wrong. It's evil. Humans are wicked. We should repent. But why, they are just hyping it. Just, uh, what's going on? Well, I, I think that we're going to see the release of a lot of prisoners. And I think that... Most Americans are locked and loaded and ready to deal with whatever come down. I was the about pipe. to ask you, what do you think this move by Obama? Because obviously there's a lot of nonviolent people in prison should be let out. But what about but, this push to let violent felons out? What's behind that? Because I, I think that he wants to return to a period of the 1960s, the 60s and the 70s, where the Black Panthers uh, with the Mau Mau's and where black liberation groups, if you will, were very prevalent. That mindset is still locked away in prison. What you have today with the, the rappers, young black men that are rappers and wear their pants below their butts, they don't have that kind of, of, of mindset and hatred against America. I think that Obama's setting up preachers to come back from the prison, from the community, from the prisons and reignite the communities. And I would say anybody living within 100 to 150 miles of a major urban area need to get prepared to see the, the riot, and if anything goes amiss or awry with Obama or somehow another Obama or something done to Obama's political ideas, such as the removal of Obamacare. I mean, tr listen, Alex, if Trump or anyone else were to take down Obamacare and it effectively goes away, you can see these people coming from prison now training young men who now wear their pants below their butts, rapping but really having no teeth now beginning to look like the 60s, the mid-60s, and the early 70s when it comes to Yeah, so to the Viacom CIA-run weapon system is activating the Beyonce's and all the rest of the folks to, you know, say, go out and kill the pigs. Yeah, so I, I, but not just pigs, but people that are part, for instance, if you are a part of the whole idea that Sure, Obama sure, and that'll cause a giant counter-oppression of black people just trying Absolutely. to, you know, live the American dream. Absolutely. So I, I, I cannot imagine that this is not going to take place. I, I, I can't see how it, I don't think Obama would have gone to the prisons unless he wanted to indicate to judges everywhere. And most of the federal and state judges are very liberal. And if Obama says that the, system, the penal system has been oppressive, you're going to see cases coming back before the courts. You're going to see parole officers releasing people who normally would be kept in prison. And, and they're going to make room for the libertarians, the patriots, the Christians, who they're now throwing the book at as the new enemy. Absolutely. So I, I think we need to be very mindful of this, and we need to be mindful of this catalyst now being released in this Roots presentation. It's not good, Alex. It's not good for, for yeah, America. And we have new and listeners Obama that the Justice Department announced the last month that, that, that they're moving to basically tell judges and others, we're going to prosecute you or come after prosecutors uh, if, if, if you don't let people off or let folks out of prison. And right. again, these are mainly violent folks they're talking about. I'm all Absolutely. for letting nonviolent people out, but no, they're talking, they're not, they're saying period, just start letting people out. Absolutely. Because I, I think Obama wants to have a different kind of a brown shirt. So if you remember that from back in 2008, 2009, militia rather than the, what we, we would have been the, what the initially idea of brown shirt is all about. I can't imagine Obama walking away from power, Alex. I can't imagine. I've told you this eight years ago. So you think now, letting the prisoners out like the Soviets and like the Nazis, when the Nazis took over, they released all the uh, people out of the prisons that were aligned with the National Socialist, hundreds of thousands of them, and put them in charge? Listen, when Castro released the prisoners during the Mariel boat lift from Cuba, and they all flooded into, uh, into Miami, into Florida, and then across over to Texas, 
that was the real start of the major drug problems in America because those and many of them were psychopaths that came out of the prisons in Cuba. So I think that what we see happening, Alex, I just can't imagine Obama walking away from power and riding off into the sunset when he knows right now he's got the courts, he's got the Supreme Court, he's got the judges, he's got the politicians, he's got the media in his hands. Why should he walk away and say, well, I had my eight years, I my... I, I, I agree with you. He might up. try something. They're so bold. Yeah, Who he's knows? He's going to try something. No, he's going to. No, no, he, he's already put it in, in the works. I mean, remember, Obama is CIA. Re, re, understand that. He is, he is a compadre. His whole family. Um, yeah, he's a compadre with Putin and Russia. He's not going to walk away from world power. He just isn't going to. Do, and anybody who thinks that he does, now I'm all for Trump. And hey, you know I am. I'm all in on Trump. But anybody who thinks that Obama's going to walk away from power, you're not thinking. You're just sure. not thinking. Let me play this clip, the chilling clip about the National Security Force, where they want to make everybody serve three years out of high school as domestic political police, social justice warriors with badges, with guns. By the third year, they can graduate and get the badges and get the guns. And it's already happening with federal police and others. They're, they're arming every agency and hiring social justice warrior types. Let's play the clip. We cannot continue to rely only on our military in order to achieve the national security objectives that we've set. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well funded. I mean, this is this is chilling what they're doing. So, so sir, you've studied it. You're in the middle of it. You were right about Obama uh, more than I was, how dangerous he'd be. I hate the Republicans so much that I was kind of neutral the first election. I'm actually embarrassed about that. I didn't support him, but I just couldn't. Bush was so bad. Uh, you know, Obama would be three times no, I worse. I can understand that. I can understand not supporting Bush, but go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Just in the one that we have before break, what else is Obama going to pull then? Well, I, I think he's going to continue to uh, exercise his powers no matter who goes into office. He's put everything in place as any reasonably person, thinking person would do, except for idiots like Bush. And I think that Bush uh, initially thought that by putting Obama in power as president, because, you know, Bush had the opportunity to stop Obama's presidency. Sure he did, yeah. He, he had the CIA report. George Tenet had all the information. He let he the had, economy slide. He even helped Obama get in. Absolutely, absolutely. So I, I think Obama has uh, I, what I see more of a race war coming like we've never seen before. You but know, more time, and more, has Obama double cross even the establishment. Is that what you're saying? I know he's double-crossed black people and he's getting ready to do it again, but they love it, Alex. Like, you can't talk to him. They love it, but he's getting <laughs> ready to double-cross them again. We'll, we'll the be back with, with, with your phone call. Stay with us, Pastor. The American people of every color really just want to be friends with each other. But no, the media won't let it rest. They just hype it and push it and drive it. Joe Biggs, there's been a shooting outside UCLA in California. Joe Biggs is right by it. He's going to probably have a live feed come up in the next segment with us. He's going to get on early with us. He's on at the bottom of the hour. He's out there covering social justice warriors foaming at the mouth. I want to go to Michael in Louisiana, AJ in Ohio, Joseph uh, in New York, Ed in California. The caller I was about to go to just hung up on line two. Uh, they had a really good question uh, but uh, about economic collapse. But another person, AJ, has the same question. Because that's what I'm concerned about. I mean, when the Royal Bank of Scotland says sell everything that's paper and the elites are getting armored redoubts, I mean, it's all over the news now. I, I, I'm hoping things don't collapse, but I mean, this bubble's so big. Uh, AJ, you're on the air. Go ahead and talk to Pastor Manning of Atla. Yeah, hi, uh, Pastor Manning. Love you to death. Um, and that's, a, that's hey, a white man telling you that. I know it's politically incorrect, but... <laughs> that's um, okay. I'll, I'll let it slide. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, anyhow, my friend, uh, yeah, um, I just, uh, I'm having a hard time um, seeing uh, Obama actually leaving the presidency. I think, you know, there, he has lots of weapons in his toolbox, and I think one of them uh, would definitely be an engineered collapse of the economy. I just kind of wanted to get your thoughts on that because, you know. Absolutely. I'm, I'm I think collapse is his big, uh, you know, ace in the hole. What do you think? Well, I, I, I agree with you 100% that he's not going to leave power. If, if he may possibly officially leave the office, but he's not going to leave power. And if he doesn't oh, you mean leave put in power, all his people, put, yeah. Yeah, well, he's already got the deck stacked everywhere as to how he will manipulate America and the world. He's got the globalists at, uh, he's at their beck and call. 
but uh, an economic collapse is the best way. You can always manipulate people when you can take food off the table and off the shelves of the supermarkets, and you can devalue everything that people have. And, and you seize can their bank them, accounts. Yeah. So I, I, I think economic collapse, it will be better than a race war. You, you're not gonna, that's not going to be very effective. It will, of course, ignite some concerns. But you're right on both, both counts. One, he's not going to leave power. And two, he's going to use an economic collapse. And though we all love Donald Trump and want to see him in, in power, we're looking at a very dark future for America. Very, very dark. Uh, great question, AJ. Anything else? Um, yeah, just uh, real quick. Um, I know it's a little off the subject, but um, I um, had this dry cough for months. And uh, I bought your lung cleanse. And um, not to get too graphic, but let's just say it cleared things up very well. So great product. Thank you very much, Alex. Thank you. It's just a whole bunch of known concentrated herbs. It, it, the problem is it's so oily, you got to keep the spout clean under hot water because it clogs because it's just a whole bunch of essential oils concentrated. Most lung stuff is just a couple sprays and some feel-good stuff. doesn't really help you. I mean, we, we sound to make something really good. So thank you for the plug. Lung cleanse is amazing. InfoWarsLive.com. Thank you, AJ. Uh, let's get one more call as we go to break here and do one more segment with Pastor Manning before he does his own broadcast. Let's talk to Ed in California. You're on the air. Go ahead, Ed. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Uh, Alex, thanks for the show. Uh, thanks for waking me up. Pastor Manny, um, I didn't call to start an argument or pick on you. I'm a black American. I work hard every day. I have a family with a sort of strong, proud history in America. And a lot right. of times when I watch your outlaw broadcast, uh, you're very negative toward black people. I just want to know why do you do that? Or why do I have that perception of you, perhaps? It, it could largely be your perception, but I can tell you there is some meat to what you're perceiving mainly because you have to get black folks' attention. Listen, I live in Harlem, and I've been black for a goodly number of years. I have seen socially, politically, religiously what black folk have done. When you're living in the midst of a community where 90% of the households are headed by women and men have no sense of responsibility, when you see children that are hungry and cold and are poor, you can only speak that as a truth. And to a lot of people, it seems very hard. I was about to say, Pastor Manning, stay there. Come back and have the floor on this. We'll go back to the caller. But I want you to be able to speak on this because it's called tough love, folks. I mean, it's, it's, it's like if an alcoholic is drinking two bottles of vodka a day, you got to tell them to stop it. We'll be back. Stay with us. Pastor Manning is our guest. I love humanity. In my gut, I'm a God-fearing person. No matter how much propaganda is out there, no matter how bad people treat me because of what color I am in my life, I know in my gut and my heart that if I start hating children of any color, that I basically forfeited my soul. I, I just feel it. I love humanity. And it's a total setup where they play us off against each other. It's all divide and conquer. And when they sit there and have black liberation theology in the, in, in, the, in the prisons, that's all Ford Foundation, CIA run, that's declassified. It's to make sure people are mentally crippled. They come out, they're controlled by those groups. They won't integrate or work with anybody else or be happy. Then that makes whites get paranoid and be even more racist because that's going on the other side. Then you have a little mini race war and then black people get even more suppressed. Blacks are what, 30% of the population, half that's men, you know, six and a half percent. And you're going to get in a fight with the with the with all the you know honkies that are armed to the teeth and you know know how to go run around the world killing everybody. I mean that is just not a good move, and that's what they're setting up. That's what they're pushing. And then Pastor Manning's over here saying, "Let's not do this. Let's be Christian. Let's get jobs. Let's build our communities. Let's have men in the homes." And that's called not liking black people. I don't know what broadcast Ed's listening to, but I hear somebody who loves humanity and loves his people. Now, I'm going to go back to Ed in a minute, but Manning, is that is that accurate what I said? Oh, it's absolutely spot on. I mean, we've had 70 years of panty waste policies and activities towards black people, obfuscating their responsibility, allowing them to think and to do and tell them how bad the world has treated them. And look at where how it's How do you make us. somebody strong weak? You pamper them so they are weak. That was a total attack. Ab absolutely. And it, 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 it's a, it was a planned attack as well. So we have to realize that, you know, Harry Truman said when he was president, they used to call him, give him hell, Harry. And, and the president Harry said, I don't give him hell. I just tell him the truth. And they think it's hell. You know, when you've got a society of people who are at the bottom of the world's social register, and there's no denying that. I didn't put black people at the bottom of the economic ladder. I didn't put them at the bottom of the family ladder. I didn't put them at the bottom of every social remedy. I, I didn't put them there. They are there. How do you get them out? 
You don't get them out by telling them it's okay for them to stay to hell there. You Adversity makes men, prosperity makes monsters. That's Victor and Hugo. So, and so we have got to be able to tell people, listen, you know, here's the truth. You need to go back to leadership of your home. You need to go back to taking care of your family and your church. And you need to realize that all of the so-called leaders over the last 60 years have made the conditions. I mean, look at Chicago. You got, you got Louis Farrakhan living in Chicago. You got Obama claiming to come from Chicago. You've got Jesse Jackson. You've got three of the of black greatest leaders in Chicago. Yet you've got, and they are the ones who are pan, panty-wasting black men. Yet they've got more killings of black people in Chicago than we have any place else. It does Alex want? Does Albert, whoever he is, want me to have the same kind of rhetoric that Jesse Jackson, Louis Farrakhan, and and Obama has for black men? Well, sure, I'm not defending Farrakhan's killings. compendium of work, but Jackson and others do want the liberal social stuff. I mean, Farrakhan at least tries to get folks to get jobs and have their own businesses. No, he does. Yeah, yeah, no, I have to give him credit for that. He does. He understands that that there is that that, that is a way in which we must go. But I, I think that when you when I live in Harlem. And I see the suffering. I'm a past of women who've got no man in their life. They go to bed lonely and cold every night. I'm the past of children who don't know who their fathers are. I see this go on and on. I know you do. And I see I see politicians get up and talk about how bad the white man is. Hell, listen, you can take care of your children. I don't care what the circumstances are. Be a father. Work two jobs, three jobs. What's wrong with that? I, I know. Mean, that's what I tell. I know, it's incredible. I'm telling you, there's, these men are just, they think being lazy, I'm about white men, Hispanics, you name it. They think laying around is fun. A man busts his ass. Absolutely, absolutely. You defend your children with your life. And I think if we had more of that kind of a spirit, more of that spirit, we wouldn't see. Well, Pastor people. Manning, I always feel like I've had a big old drink of cold water on a hot day when you've been on. You're a great patriot. I love your spirit. Hey, Atlas.org. Alex, Alex, thank you so very much. It's a big honor. Thank man. you. That's big honor to have